Right, I'm here with the former IBO champ of the world and, and great Australian um, boxing commentator, commentator Ted Kofi. Ted, um, massive fight here in Sydney, um, Zhenebek, um versus Mikhailovic. Just your thoughts on this fight. Well, a great fight. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of issues when, when they went to Las Vegas. Uh, Janabek struggled to make the way. It gives you the idea of what boxers go through when they, actually, when they have to actually get ready for a fight. You know, it, it's, it's really, really testing. Um, I think Janabek, he looks ready. Man of few words. Uh, I think Mikhailovic has got a great opportunity to do something really, really brilliant. He's on home territory. Um, there's only a few fights, so they just can get ready and just get straight into it. I'm really looking forward to it. Were you surprised that he left it so late to get here? Yeah, I mean, as in to get in the country. Yeah, he only got yeah. here yesterday. Well, you know, I think I think he spends most of his time in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. And with the time zone, it's only a couple of hours difference or three or four hours difference in time zone. Um, if you're in a country like this and you get a lot of chance to rest and a lot of chance to just box, train and rest, and I think it's going to be okay. Um, a lot of people do like to acclimatise, especially from England or America where you've got you know, massive time zones. From Kazakhstan, I think you'll be okay. There were some thoughts that he might be overlooking um, Mikhailovich. A any chance of that? There is definitely a chance of that because you know, he's, he's the um, he's unified champion, he's got two belts. Um, he was probably looking for the big fish and he probably feels like he has to come and do this. So it's easy to just say, I'm better than him. I mean, and when these guys train, they don't play. <laughs> so he's probably thinking, I've got, I've, got, you know, I've got an easy job here to come and do. But when someone like Mikhailovich is, is in this position, he's going to potentially rise to the occasion. And if he's the best that he can be, and Janabek is just fighting medium, then you know, things can go the opposite way quite easily in boxing. How do you think it goes? Oh, I don't know. It's a tough one. I think there's a couple of scenarios just so I can put myself in the right position. Um, scenario one is Janabek comes in and, you know, reigns his dominance. He's a very, very good fighter. He's got good footwork. He's got great balance, control and distance. And he's an executor when he gets you hurt. Um, but on the other hand, uh, Mikhailovich is, is, you know, he's a, he's a good boxer. He's a passionate guy. And if he, you know, can, can manage them first couple of rounds and land a couple of shots, then I could see it going, you know, possibly the distance. I just want to ask your thoughts on a couple of other fights coming up. Um, Jai Pattaya, a massive fight yeah. um, coming up uh, a couple of weeks now. Mm. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think Jai is uh, Jai's the boogeyman or the main man in the cruiserweight division. You know, I think he's not happy for the fact that, you know, Chris Billam Smith and um, Zerdo has got the unification. So I think if Jai just keeps his, his head in place and if he just focuses on what's in front of him instead of what's ahead of him, then I think he's going to win the fight in good fashion. It may go the distance because Mass is a big, strong guy that's worked with heavyweights and he's going to come and survive if nothing else. So I think it will go the distance, but I think Jai will win. I think Jai's got what it takes to unify that division and um, come undisputed. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he's a boxing purist. And if you think about boxing purists, he understands what the sport of boxing does and what you need to do to become very, very good in boxing. It's not about your last performance per se. It's about how you manage each performance moving forward. So Jai's got all the boxing acumen and all the boxing um, IQ that you need. And with that boxing IQ, coupled with great training and great focus, then there's no reason he can't become undisputed without a doubt. Tim Zhu, Bakram, is alive, um, coming up. Yeah. Three weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, thoughts on that? Uh, overall thoughts on, on Tim Zhu's career so far? Well, I'm an early adopter of Tim Zhu. You know, I've always liked him. I liked him early from when he fought Jeff Horn and even before. You know, Tim's got great pedigree. You know, his father was a great boxer and Tim grew up in that whole Russian strict army soldier discipline success he's got it all around him so even though he's coming in with another russian that they're ferocious trainers i think tim has that same regimen you know igor speaks russian to him he's got that that old school you know eastern bloc mentality of success and speed and power and all the things he needs to do to be successful i think tim's going to win i think he's going to win in great fashion hopefully he gets the knockout but i think from here it's going to really catapult him into the next phase of his career where hopefully he can become unified and if not undisputed what are your thoughts on that whole Fondora situation? I know it's in the past now, but I um, yeah. haven't got your thoughts on that. What, what did you make of all that? Well, if it was me and I was training Tim Zhu, I would have stopped the fight. Only because it, was, it wasn't just a bleed, it was a fountain, you know, and he couldn't see. And even though he had a great chance of winning, 
Um, he lost the fight simply because he couldn't see. He still hurt Fondora a couple of times, even though um, he, he was completely impaired. Um, but looking at what he did, I think it's great. I think he's done well to put it behind him. I mean, you know, the monkey's off his back with, with, with his L. So he's got one L on his record. That's not an official L, if you like. He didn't get knocked out or anything. But I think he can just move on to bigger and better things now. Hopefully the, he, the, uh, the, the scar has healed correctly and he can move on to bigger and better things. I mean, great things ahead for Tim Zhu. You know, he's got, he's got I, I like his vision, I like his passion, I like his desire and determination. So when you've got all of that coupled with his history, there's nothing in front of you but success. But Liam Parra, a massive win for him against Subriel Matias. Um, yeah. Uh, thoughts on him? A great win. I like Liam. You know, um, I saw him at... I saw him in Hawaii at the lounge. I was with my family coming in from Hawaii and he was coming from Vegas via Hawaii on Hawaiian Airlines. And I said to him, you know, you know, I'm a commentator. He said, yeah, yeah, I know you. I said, are you going to win? He said, yeah, trust me, man, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. And he came and did it in the first round. I love Brock as well. Great for boxing. Um, but Liam did a job. And what he did against um, Subriel Matisse is, is, is outstanding. I mean, you know, going to Puerto Rico, the word is you've got to knock them out to get a draw. So to go out there and win on points and to win against, you know, such a fearsome fighter, it speaks it speaks volumes about, you know, who he is and what he's prepared to do. So big things ahead for Liam. I wish him all the best. Yeah, what about yourself? One of my favourite um, boxing commentators growing up, uh, yeah. watching Chalk Mundine, Danny yeah. Green, all those fights. Um, yeah. What are you doing nowadays? You're going to be back on the screens anytime soon? Yeah, I'm around. You know, uh, my social media, I've just, you know, my daughter's a singer and um, she's got a lot of social media. She keeps saying, Dad, get into social media. And I haven't been doing so, but she's been helping me. And so now my social media's come up and I'm doing a bit of social media and, and, and you know, some commentary and a few interviews over in Saudi Arabia. So, you know, I'm probably going to be a bit more in the limelight and coming to the fights and seeing things that I should have been doing a long time ago. So, you know, anytime I can give an interview or an opinion, I'm here and I'm happy to do it. Legend. Thanks so much, man. Thanks, Jay.